Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Fendi Mama Baguette. Uh, all right, so grab a coffee, grab a tea, let's start a workout, let's go to work, let's do laundry, whatever it is that you're doing, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Ms. Molly. Have you seen some of the outrageous prices resellers are asking for the Louis Vuitton large monogram series? I've seen some pieces on pre-loved sites for double the price. Do you think these resellers had no intentions of keeping the items and just bought them to hike up the price and make a profit? And if so, do you think that it is fair for them to have sales associates save special items for them and deny everyone else a chance? This is a fabulous question and I have seen those prices. They are crazy, crazy high in comparison to what they retail for. And I can definitely understand someone's frustration, especially if it's an item that you really, really want, especially if it's a collection that it's going to be extremely popular and you wanna be able to get your hands on it. But because of resellers, you don't even have the opportunity to, to even look at it because it's sold out. So I definitely understand that and I also feel that there are resellers out there that just have it as a business They buy it just so that they can make a profit now I'm not a fan of seeing the price points that they set for these hard to find or these sold out items either Unfortunately, I think that the prices come down to supply and demand I honestly feel that it comes down to supply and demand because let's say that there is a handbag that's $2,000 normally. That's what it retails for and you can't find it anywhere. It's been sold out and some of the boutiques say that they're not going to get it in and a reseller has it for $3,000. Now, is it worth the extra $1,000 to have the bag that you want in your hands instead of having to wait to find it at a boutique if you can even find it? Some people might say yes. Some people might say no. Personally, there hasn't been anything in the past that I am willing to pay uh, over retail price for an item, but I understand people that have purchased over retail because it's an item that they really, really want or it's a unicorn piece or whatever the case may be, I understand that point of view. So, I mean, it's it's difficult to say because I feel like some of the, the associates are like, you know what, the item's gonna get sold, no big deal, but then again, there are people that really want the chance to be able to even look at the item to decide if they want to get it and they don't have the opportunity because the item is sold out so quickly whether it's a week before it launches or the day that it launches within minutes it's completely gone so i see i definitely see the frustration in that but what do you guys think do you think it's fair do you think it's unfair do you see it kind of like it's a supply and demand at the end of the day it is a business on both sides you know when it comes to resellers or when it comes to consignment shops or whatever the case may be or even the boutique itself you know at the end of the day they are selling that item but I would love to hear what you guys think I have also heard that there are some boutiques that put a limit on the number of items of new collections that they can end up getting I don't know if that's something that they necessarily implement in every boutique or if it's only certain boutiques and as I've said previously sometimes some associates are more lenient than others so I have no idea but I have heard that in the past but either way I would love to hear your thoughts so fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it Next question from Karen B. When you're looking to buy a bag, either brand new or pre-loved, is there anything besides the condition that is a deal breaker for you? This is an awesome question. And when buying brand new or pre-loved, the one thing that's a deal breaker for me is final sale. Final sale freaks me out. I'm not a big fan of the commitment because I feel like sometimes you need to be able to take the bag home to see how it ends up working out with your wardrobe, to see how it feels with other small other goods, or just to kind of try it on without necessarily having the pressure of someone breathing down your neck, are you gonna get it, are you gonna get it type of thing. You can take your time in making that decision to see if you want to, if you want to keep it and if you if it doesn't feel right or if it's just not your jam kind of thing then i think that by being able to return it it's it's very it's very liberating <laughs> you know you don't have that weight on your shoulders that it's kind of set in stone so the final sale always freaks me out and i do believe i could be wrong but i do believe that celine the boutiques all of their items or they used to be i don't know if they are anymore they used to be final sale you know so i'd see a bag that i really really liked and sometimes you know they like the boutique lights get the best of me and i was just like oh i really like it, i really like it you know maybe i should get it and everything was kind of lining up and then she said, it's final sale. I backed away. <laughs> I backed away. I'm like, no, I need, I need that buffer that if I change my mind or if it's the lighting, if it's the ambiance or what have you, that kind of um, adds to the whole, you have to get it now. And then when I get home, I'm like, you know what? This is definitely not me. I like that option. I need, I need that, <laughs> you know? 
Uh, so that's the one thing. Now, this does not apply to buying an item from someone's personal collection. Whenever I'm buying something from someone's personal collection, I completely understand the final sale. They are not a store, it's from their own collection, so that I, I completely get, and I don't expect there to be any returns or anything like that. But when it comes to a consignment shop, or when it comes to a boutique, I, I'm just not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the commitment, I'm not a fan of the set in stone, if you will, to a certain extent that it is a final sale. I need that wiggle room. I, I need a little bit of a buffer. So that's just me, but I would love to know what's the one thing that is a deal breaker for you when it comes to buying something pre-loved or at the boutique. Is it the whole you know, final sale like I have or is there something else? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Frederick Thomas. I know you adore your black caviar Chanel wallet on chain, but I'd love to get your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton Pochette Felici, particularly in Epi or Emprunt. I want a smaller pink bag to wear at weddings, special occasions, etc. And I'm drooling over the rose ballerine and the powdered rose versions. Um, all right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of the Louis Vuitton Felici right now. I love this bag. I think both of those colors are insanely gorgeous, and not to mention, it also has a fabulous price point, especially for an all leather compact handbag in comparison to other fashion houses, kind of like what you mentioned, the Chanel Wallet on Chain. That guy retails for $2,500 here in the States, so this one is a lot less, but you still have all leather, and it also comes with those two small leather goods, not to mention the fact that it is very versatile because you can also remove the chain. So I'm a big fan, big, big fan of the Felici. And I wouldn't necessarily use those two small leather goods with the bag just because I feel that it makes it too restricting. You can't really get away with carrying too much if you have those two in there. But those, you can end up incorporating them with other handbags or just use them by themselves if you wanted to go even more compact. Uh, but I still think that this is a fabulous, fabulous bag and just the versatility, the price point and the colors that it's available in are gorgeous like I mentioned previously. And between the two, um, even though I do like Epi and I do feel that, it, that it's very, very durable, I really love this bag in the Empreint leather. There's just something about it with the embossing and just the way that the monogram looks. I think it looks incredibly gorgeous. So I don't think you can go wrong with either, but I definitely recommend it. It's a beautiful, beautiful bag. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Veronica Fernandez. Do you ever feel bad or guilty around friends or family carrying your bags? I have a small collection that is slowly growing and sometimes I feel bad because my family makes comments. My husband says, don't pay attention and enjoy your bags. They'll be our daughters one day. This is an awesome question and do I ever feel bad or guilty around friends or family carrying my handbags? Absolutely not, nope. And I couldn't agree more with what your husband said. He is right. Life is too short to care what other people think. If something makes you happy, if something brings you joy, no one has the right to judge you on what that is. And no one has the right to tell you how you should or shouldn't spend your money, be it luxury goods or anything else. And I have had those comments in the past from family, from friends, and I choose to ignore them. And that's another thing. You don't owe an explanation to anybody. You don't have to tell people how you do what you do. And I've also noticed that even if you try to explain yourself, some people already have an idea of what's going on that regardless of what you say, nothing's going to change their minds. The conversation isn't gonna go anywhere. It's gonna go in circles. So that's why I've always said, you do you, let that person do whatever it is that they're doing and you keep keeping on type of thing, you know? So if something makes you happy, if something brings you joy, that's all that matters. And I think it's really awesome that your husband sees that as well. He's like, don't think of anything else, just enjoy the handbags. And he's totally right because no one else should have a say on what you decide to do. Nobody, with anything that we decide to do in our lives. We don't owe an explanation to anybody. And there are many people out there that will try to kind of rain on your parade and make you feel bad and try to make you feel guilty. Absolutely not. And the way that I've seen it as well is that I work hard for what I like and I work hard for what I enjoy, both my husband and I. And if we choose to, to do whatever we decide to do, I don't have to explain myself to anybody and we continue to, to enjoy what we enjoy, you know? And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So I don't know if this ends up helping you out. And I know it's easier said than done to ignore everything, especially when it comes from friends and family. 
but I would just try to block everything out. You keep doing you. You enjoy what you enjoy and don't let anybody take that away from you. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Gail Jackson. I am thinking of buying a Chanel Deauville. How do you use this bag? I work in a corporate environment, so it doesn't feel right for the office, but I was thinking about leisure travel and the beach. What do you think of this bag for those purposes? Um, all right, so I did bring one out, so we have a little bit more eye candy. This is the large size Deauville in the gray raffia material with the silver hardware and the black leather trim. I absolutely love this bag, and out of the two that I have, this is the one that I end up gravitating towards the most. Um, I think it would be fabulous for those purposes and more to be honest. I have used it for travel many of times. I've never had any issues. I've been able to fit all of my essentials quite nicely in here and it's still very comfortable. Same thing goes for the beach. I've been able to fit two to three beach towels in here and anything else that we might need uh, without any problems either. But mostly I use this as an everyday bag and because it is so casual and that's the type of wardrobe that I have, it ends up working out perfectly for my lifestyle. Uh, but out of the sizes that they have available, I prefer the larger size just because you have a little bit more play with how you can carry it. You can either hand carry it, crook of your arm, or if you wanted to go hands-free, you can use the shoulder strap, but it is a very large handbag. Um, and some people might think it's a little bit overwhelming, but the fact that I can fit everything in the kitchen sink, my friend's kitchen sink, and anybody else's kitchen sink in here makes me very, very happy because like I said before, it is quite spacious. Now I will have to say that if you are looking to go for a Deauville, I highly recommend using a purse organizer just because the purse organizer really helps to maintain the shape because of the type of uh, material that they use for these bags. They lose their structure very easily. Many of you know I'm not a big fan of the whole beautiful mess. So this guy has been a major, major game changer, but I love it. I think it's great and I feel like to me, this is the Chanel version of a Louis Vuitton Neverfull. That's how much I love it. You know how I feel about the Neverfull. That's exactly how I feel about the Deauville. And uh, as far as the materials that they have available, um, the other one that I have is, it's like a tweed type of fabric plus the raffia. This is just the raffia. The raffia has been a lot more lightweight. And to be honest, I haven't had any issues with wear and tear. I haven't had any problems with pop stitches or anything like that. I have not babied it whatsoever. And I feel that it looks just as good as the day that I got it. But uh, I am a big, big fan of the Deauville. So if you want a really great bag for travel and you don't necessarily want to go for a Neverfull or you want to go something uh, for something for the beach that's very lightweight or it just as an everyday bag kind of the way that I tend to incorporate it the most, I highly, highly recommend it. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Jane Ann. I've been going back and forth between getting a bandolier strap from Louis Vuitton, but of course I want to be able to get my cost per wear down on it. If I recall, you have one. Would you say that the monogram on your strap would go well with maybe Damia Ben? Um, all right, so yes, you are right. I do have one and I did bring it out so we have a little bit more eye candy. This is the Louis Vuitton bandolier strap and the monogram with a fuchsia interior. Beautiful, beautiful color. And uh, I actually don't use it as much now as I did when I first got it. When I first got it, I used it nonstop. And um, I know that there, this is the shorter version. There is a longer version, so that way if you need a little bit more length, I definitely recommend going for that one. But it is very, very comfortable. And I think that by adding this to a Damia Ben piece or even a Damia Zor, I think it would look great. It adds a lot of personality to the outfit. It adds a lot of personality to the handbag. Just like I think that mixing and matching fashion houses is great as well so if you have like a Christian Dior strap and you want to put that on a Celine handbag I think that looks great as well I also want to show you guys that the trim the white trim on the strap is starting to turn yellow it uh, let me coil this up so you can see a little bit better it's a very slight hue of yellow but it is yellow nonetheless so I don't know if the lighting is going to help or not but right around here it's not as bright white as when I first got it so that's why I've said in the past that anytime you have lighter colored items uh, the more and more that you use them the more prone they are to yellowing and I end up storing this in the dust bag away from the Sun and it just goes to show that uh, it's still starting to change uh, color a little bit but if you don't want to experience that I would recommend going for the darker colors that they have available 
available. So they have the regular bandolier strap and the extra large bandolier strap. And I do believe they, they also have adjustments uh, on the straps. So that's also another way to go if you want, uh, if you want a little bit more length or if you want to be able to control uh, the strap and it's not necessarily a one size fits all, then I would recommend going for those. Uh, but I think that these are super, super fun. And um, I have used this the most actually on my key balls. And I feel that with the key ball, I like that it kind of brings it up a little bit higher up on my torso. And because the strap is a little bit wider, I feel like it's wider than some of the other ones that they have available. Um, it's, it's that much more comfortable. You know, it doesn't necessarily dig into my shoulder. And in a sense, it almost distributes the weight a little bit better of that key ball. Uh, but still, I think that these are really, really great. And I haven't had an issue with it, like kind of rolling off of my shoulder either, uh, regardless with the type of clothing or the type of top that I'm wearing. So I thought I'd throw that out as well. But in general, I think that these are really fun. It adds a really nice pop of color. It adds a lot of personality to the handbag, whether it is with the same fashion house or with a different fashion house. I think that these are really, really cool. So fantastic question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Diana Marie. If you had to keep only one, which would you choose? The black caviar wallet on chain or the red mini reissue? Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, I did bring them both out so we have a little bit more eye candy. This is the mini reissue and the red aged calfskin leather and the shiny gold hardware and the wallet on chain and the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Um, I love them both. They are both forever favorites and I feel that each one brings something to the table that the other one doesn't have. Now the wallet on chain I've had for an eternity and I've said this in other videos, this has been one of the best purchases from the fashion house and I still feel that way. Um, it is my, it's my go-to when going uber compact. It fits all of the essentials when going compact and it's the one that I choose to travel with because I think, uh, like I said before, it just, it fits everything that I need. Now, the mini reissue is newer to my collection, but the fact that it is a mini version of a reissue makes me happy. The color combination and the versatility of the strap, as I said in the, um, and the reveal video is, is awesome. You know, you're not limited to a one size fits all. Now, if I had to choose between the two, I, <laughs> I'd have to go with the wallet on chain. All right. I'd have to go with the wallet on chain because I love the length of the chain that this has when I go to use a crossbody. And some people might think that it's because of my attachment to it because I've had it for so long. That could be a reason, but I just think that it's just, it's kind of like a, it's so carefree. I don't have to think twice about it type of thing. And just the ease of using it and the fact that it goes with everything uh, that I have in my wardrobe is great. Not saying that this one isn't great because like you guys know, the color draws me in every Every single time um, but I'd still end up going for this one it's this compact and carefree and you know and very uh, and very comfortable now I will have to say that like I said in that previous video of, uh, of the reveal this one does end up fitting a little bit more than the mini rectangulars I feel because uh, I feel it has a little bit more give because it is the aged calfskin uh, but when it comes to the wallet on chain and the regular rectangular minis I feel that they end up carrying about the same because with this one you don't have to carry a card holder or anything like that so um, <laughs> it, I mean it's tough and I know I've had this a little bit of a shorter time but my my heart still belongs to the chanel wallet on chain for sure so fantastic question and hopefully i was able to answer it and the last question from waida camille hopefully i said that correctly can you do an update video on what you've been doing exercise slash diet you look so good keep it up and keep inspiring us you are so so sweet thank you very much uh as far as diet and exercise or what i've been doing i went back to the same routine that i had after my gallbladder surgery which is incorporating more exercise into my lifestyle and weighing out my food and really cutting out junk food. Because after, you know, after like a year, year and a half, I was still doing pretty good. And I kept thinking, you know what, I got this, I got this. I don't have to weigh out my food. I don't have to be as strict. And I was a lot more lenient with what I was eating. So the whole time, like I said, I kept thinking, oh, I got this. No, I don't got this because I started to go back to my old eating habits and it's a slippery slope for me. You know, it's not like I could just be like, oh, no problem, no big deal. It's always like a daily battle. It's always like a weekly battle for me. So I went back to being strict. I went back to weighing out my food and definitely cutting out the junk food and doing a lot more cardio so that's really what it's been and i'll be honest with you the whole cutting out bread like i like i talked about two weeks ago 
we wanted to try it out just to see if we can do it just because of the relationship that both my husband and I have with bread. Um, but it's been pretty amazing. I think I've only lost five pounds from the time that I stopped eating bread to, to now. So it hasn't been like this huge, this huge, you know, uh, amount that I've lost. But I have to say that because I cut out the bread, I feel a lot better. I feel, um, I don't feel as bloated as I normally do, and I don't feel as lethargic. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how much longer I can go, okay? <laughs> because I feel like every time I go grocery shopping, I'm just salivating towards the loaves of bread or when I see like sweets or what have you. So um, as far as cutting out the, the processed carbs and bread, it's been, uh, it's been pretty great, but you know, that's, that's, that's all I've been doing. Nothing, <laughs> nothing too crazy. Uh, but the weighing out the food is really what keeps me on track and also the food diary, you know? So the same thing that I talked about in my weight loss video, like a year ago, it's the same thing that I've been doing, just implementing it more and more, uh, than I had been in the last six months. So I don't know if that ends up helping you out, but fantastic question. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Uh, for this week's lineup, I don't know if you're going to see me later on. If you do, it will be Friday. I'm gonna shoot for Friday. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two or three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.